Okay, how long should your longest run be before your marathon? And how fast should it be? What pace should you be able to hold and for how long based on your target race pace? I see a lot of marathon runners, especially, but distance runners, getting towards their race and then getting fearful, getting anxious that they've not been able to hold pace in training for long periods of time, and therefore, how can they possibly do it on race day if they've not done it already? I'm gonna help explain that very reason and hopefully remove a lot of that fear so that you can focus on your task at hand, which is running as fast as you possibly can for your race. And I'm also gonna tell you just how short my long run was before I did 221 for the marathon and the reasons for that so that you can use that refined process in order to get the very most out of your long runs to hit your target pace on race day. But first of all, what is the purpose of the long run? Three things. Purpose of the long run is to build physical strength, physiological strength, the engine, the heart, the lungs, and also mental strength. And if you look at it like that, that when you're out there for long periods of time, whether it's long, slow distance, or a specific pace long run, you're building your vessel, the body which you're moving over the ground with. And you're getting those muscles used to moving repetitively for long periods of time at or around the pace that you're gonna be holding in a marathon, but being out there for long periods of time. Physiologically, we're improving our aerobic capacity so that you become efficient at moving over the ground. But it's equally important that we know what it's like to be out there for long periods of time, especially alone, so that once the race comes, although there will be other runners at certain parts of the race, you are used to, in your mind, being out there for long periods of time. And that, for me, is the most important part of marathon running and ultramarathon running. The long run also serves as a great place to get feedback. So you might be aerobically sound and able to go out there for long periods of time, but you get tired in that final third, and that might be a weak core of which you can correct. You can strengthen your core and feel the benefits, not only just in your long running, but all of your running and especially your racing when it gets to those final stages. You can course correct within your training. Now, pacing strategy. It's amazing how many runners contact me the day before their marathon or two, three weeks before, and they don't know what pace to go for in their marathon because they've not been working to that in their training. But it's not as simple as that. If it was as simple as that, you'd train towards something, you'd aim for it in race, and that would happen. What in reality happens is exactly the same that happened to me in 2012 at Seville Marathon. I'd gone from running a three hour 25 marathon to come into Seville and thinking, I want to run my first sub three. I want to run 2.59 and join that club. And at three o'clock in the morning, I was laying in bed with a calculator on my phone, calculating what time I'd actually be happy with based on what the training had predicted I was capable of holding. And so I calculated a new time, went off at that pace the next day, and ran a negative split to run two hours and 37 minutes. So it happens to us all. That pacing strategy should be a moving target. And a lot of runners will move that target back as they get close to race day, because they've not been able to hold marathon pace for long extended periods of time, especially during their long runs. So they'll adjust the target to accommodate that. And that's that limiting belief that we're trying to remove in this video. What you can also do is adjust that target and move it up based on the training. And if you've got 13 weeks specific training and four or five weeks getting fit, for that, that's 17 or 18 weeks that you're moving forward in fitness, which inc includes moving forward in pace in your intervals and at pace and distance in your long run. So there's a lot of improvement that you're gonna be making in those three to four months. The best way for me to do it is exactly as I did it at Seville, but not the night before. So what time would excite you? What time is realistic, but it would excite you to cross the finish line and be absolutely buzzing that you've just hit that? and then work back from that and work back sensibly, 13 weeks specific training plan, then four or five weeks getting ready so that first couple of weeks of the specific plan is not a shock to the system. You can handle the faster stuff and you can handle the longer stuff. So let's work with a very round number, like 3.30 for the marathon, which is five minutes per kilometer. And that allows us to go 10% faster, which is 
4.30 per kilometer and 10% slower, which is 5.30 per kilometer. And within that, what we're trying to do within the training cycle is get to 30K in the marathon and still feel like we've got the handbrake on. So that when we release the handbrake, we're able to push on. That's how it should feel for the first 25 to 30K. So within the training, we're working at five minutes per kilometer and extended periods of time at marathon pace at five minutes per kilometer. So we're getting the muscles used to working in exactly the same way as they will be doing on race day. What we also want to do is work with 10% faster, 430 per kilometer, and work with our intervals and faster segments of our long run so that we're making marathon pace, five minutes per kilometer, feel really easy. And that's gonna allow us to get to 30K and still feel like we have plenty of energy left. And then you'll spend a lot of time, whether that's in your long, slow distance, long runs, or your easy runs, running at 5.30 or six minutes, a so 10% slower or 20% slower than marathon pace. And what that's gonna enable you to do is spend a big chunk of time very closely related to your marathon pace. So you're using muscles again in a very, very similar way that you're going to for the full distance of a marathon on race day. Top tip for you regarding pacing. And for me, this is a cheat code because it opens up so many mental barriers. A lot of runners don't go for the pace that they're capable of in a race because they haven't been able to hold it for long extended periods of time within their training. And that seems rational. But what they're not taking into consideration is the accumulated fatigue of the training, many weeks, months, potentially years, training consistently to hit the interval sessions and long runs. They're also not taking into consideration the power of a, of a good taper. And they're also not taking into consideration the race day energy which might be your competitive nature coming out of you. It might be you running within a group, running with other runners. It might be you feeding, and this again, it's a superpower, you feeding off that nervous energy, that anxiety, that tension around the race. For some people, and I'm one of those people, that's a superpower on race day. And if you can tap into that and use it to your benefit, you're gold. And a great example of this, and just to show you just how short my long run was before I ran 221. When I was training for 221, I was aiming for 320 per kilometer, which is great figure to deal with because it's exactly 10 times 20 seconds. So 10% slower would be 340 per kilometer, 10% faster would be three minutes per kilometer. I knew, and I was confident enough in my process, that if I could hold for a third of the marathon distance, so 14 kilometers, if I could hold 10% slower than the pace that I wanted to race on race day, which was 340 per kilometer, I knew I could do, if I could do that within a long run of 24K, so 5K, maybe four minutes per kilometer, middle 14K at 340 per kilometer, final 5K at four minutes per kilometer, I knew that I was good to go. And so I had confidence that if I could run 340 and not 320 per kilometer for an extended period of time, third of the marathon distance, on fatigued legs, on tired legs, I knew that once you removed that accumulated fatigue, turned it into a taper, I could easily gain 10%. And that would feel really, really easy. What I also knew was I'm strong on race day. I attack a race day and think I've done all the hard work. That is out of my control now, today is all about the party. And so that removes the nerves, the tension, the anxiety, and actually helps you to feed off that race day energy. And again, for me, it gives me five, 10% easily. What I also did in order to underline that pace was to work with 10% faster the marathon pace during my intervals. So I'd spend a lot of time during my intervals at between three minutes per kilometer and 320 per kilometer. So the longer reps would be at marathon pace and the shorter reps would be way faster than that, but I never needed to go more than 10% faster. Another pro tip is it takes a lot of confidence to train and train and train and then go for your marathon pace on one single morning on one day and very, few top athletes do it. What they want instead is a benchmark five or six weeks out. And that will typically be 10 to 13 miles, 10 miles to half marathon, 
and they will race that at the pace they want to hold in a marathon. Some will go even quicker, but I don't think you need to do that. What that's gonna give them is the race day energy, the nutrition strategy, which they will have been using in interval day and long run day as well. So it will be second nature for them, but it will also be a race day simulation and give them that excitement of being on race day. But they're not gonna taper for it. So they will realize that they've still got that accumulated fatigue They've not got that freshness that the taper will give them. So they'll build confidence and 13 miles at marathon pace, but they'll realize that they quite easily hold double that once they put in a taper and remove that accumulated fatigue. It's amazing how many recreational marathon runners just run one or two races a year and that's it. So when it gets to race day, it's quite alien for them. And so all the nerves, tension are there and it's debilitating very, very difficult for them to optimize their performance because they're not used to that situation when they could quite easily sign up for shorter distances and use them as their strategy within training on the way to running a fast marathon. Park run's perfect for that. Final important point, many runners when they get into running are very inconsistent. They will hammer an interval session or hammer a long run, then take too many days to recover or even worse, they'll jump into the next session and then get injured or ill and then have a bad relationship with running. Got to respect the recovery and you've got to respect how fast or how far you can push in a single session. Think of it in terms of 13 weeks specific training program is how you're gonna get your improvement, not a single session. And within that 13 weeks, three weeks of taper and 10 weeks of long runs, 10 specific long runs, 10 interval sessions, so that's 20 sessions. And if you get 80% of those right, 16 out of the 20, you're in PB shape. That's all you need to do. So it's actually very, very simple, but it's about the consistency and the discipline. And that initial discipline of factoring in the work ethic and making the runs happen, then turns to a discipline of holding yourself back when you know you can actually run further or faster, but you're playing the long game. If you've got anything from that, please like, subscribe, and let me know what is your dream marathon time and what are you doing to achieve it?